Have you ever considered yourself lazy but ambitious? You want to build projects, but you don't want to waste time on the wrong ones. I was the same way, so let's rank the most common projects. Also, make the video full screen and commit to watching the whole thing, because if you can't even get through this video, there's probably no hope for you. Let's start with the project I know some of you have built, maybe even proudly. I'm talking about wrapping ChatGPT in a UI and calling it a day. Here's the deal. Everyone loves dunking on ChatGPT wrappers. They're like the fast food of AI, quick, easy, and cheap. It's also peak TensorFlow teamy behavior, just slapping an API call on an interface and pretending you built AGI. That being said, there is value there. People joke that perplexity is like a ChatGPT wrapper. I've even heard people say that OpenAI is an NVIDIA wrapper, which is hilarious, but also kind of true. The point is everything in AI and software in general is built on top of something else. So if you're adding meaningful improvements like RAG or retrieval augmentation generation or fine tuning, then sure, this project can definitely have merit. Here's how to build it. First, pick an LLM like ChatGPT, Claude, or even an open source model like Llama. Two, design an interface. Could be a simple Flask app or a chatbot inside a Discord server. And three, if you want it to be more than just a wrapper, integrate something like RAG or fine tuning. Final verdict. It's not the worst project, but it's also not a portfolio highlight, C tier. This project gets a lot of hate for being basic, but honestly, I think it's a fantastic learning experience. If you don't yet understand the nitty gritty details of neural networks or how loss functions work, then you're just throwing libraries at a problem. This project teaches you the core fundamentals of deep learning, and I'm a huge believer that building for learning is one of the best ways to get offers. When I was in college, I spent a ton of time building the fundamental projects from scratch and I think this played a huge role in landing multiple new grad offers. But let's be real, recruiters have seen this project a million times. Their eyes glaze over the second they see MNIST on a resume. Even if they don't understand what it means, since they're not usually technical, they've still seen it a million times, so it becomes repetitive for them. If you put this project on LinkedIn, PyTorch Peter might respect you, but a hiring manager isn't gonna be impressed. Here's how to build it. First, implement the forward and backward pass in NumPy. Two, train the model on a simple dataset like MNIST. And third, bonus points if you go beyond MNIST, try a dataset with weirder images. Final verdict? It's great for learning, but not for impressing recruiters, so I'm gonna put it in the B tier. Look, I don't know who started these projects, but they need to be stopped. Horoscope prediction? AI can't predict the future. Pretty sure astrology isn't real. Let's move on. Gender prediction? If you're just classifying names as male or female, that's just a dictionary lookup. There's no need for machine learning. These projects belong in the garbage F tier. Now we're talking. Fine tuning an LLM is one of the best projects for your learning and your portfolio. Why? Because it's an end-to-end -end project. One, you get experience with dataset preparation. Two, you'll work with industry standard libraries like Hugging Faces Transformers. And three, the applications are literally endless. You could fine tune a model for customer support coding assistance, or even tutoring. Here's how to build it. First, choose a base model like Llama from Meta or the Mistral model. Two, gather a data set. These could be public sources or scraped data. Three, train using what's called parameter efficient fine tuning techniques or PEFTs. These are like LoRa and QLoRa. This means you won't need your own GPU. No need for that you can use the free one on Google Colab. Four, evaluate the end result and celebrate the improvements. Final verdict, absolutely worth it, A tier. Sentiment analysis is another classic project. It's a great way to learn the basics of NLP or natural language processing, the field of AI that focuses on teaching computers to read and write. But much like MNIST, it's way overdone. If you're doing this project, try to make it unique. Instead of basic sentiment analysis on tweets, try to make it harder like sarcasm detection, or maybe try fine tuning a model on customer support interactions. Final verdict is that it's great for learning, but a bit too common to stand out, B tier. 
This is an insane project. It requires a mix of computer vision and NLP, which means you'll be handling multimodal AI, a skill that's only becoming more valuable. Challenges include data pre-processing, since you have to handle images and text together, architectural complexity, since you'll combine a CNN with a transformer, and third, the training difficulty. This will require careful hyperparameter tuning. But if you build this project, you'll level up fast. Final verdict, huge learning potential, A tier. This is it, the best possible AI ML project. Recently, I talked to Boris Minardis, an AI researcher, and we both agreed. Implementing a research paper from scratch is the most valuable thing you can do as an aspiring ML engineer. The best goal? Implementing attention is all you need and training a small transformer from scratch. This gives you a deep understanding of transformers and makes you incredibly confident in your ML abilities. Here's how to build it. One, pick a research paper. Start with something well-documented like transformers. Two, break it into its key components like dataset prep, model architecture, and training. And three, implement it without relying on any high-level libraries. No hugging face magic, write it from scratch using PyTorch. Final verdict, if you build this project, you're on your way to becoming a chat. You're in a league of your own, S tier. Have you ever wondered if AI models can think like human beings? I talked to 3Blue1Brown, AKA Grant Sanderson about this, and it was a really interesting conversation. Check this clip out, you don't wanna miss it. And of course, don't be a TensorFlow Timmy.